Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we are going to put together the Chaos Commissar from the Morak box, but I have a Chaos uh, Cult Gang for Necromunda, so this guy will be my gang cult leader. So we're going to start off, we have the frame, we've got our tools, we have our instructions, but first thing I want to do is swap out the base. So this is a 32 millimeter base. I went into my Necromunda box. What we do is we line these up. Perfect. So we are going to throw this into the bit box and keep our Necromunda base. All right. So first thing, let's open up these instructions. Now I've got my baking tray here, and that is to catch any of those bits that decide they want to bounce and fly away. Hopefully the edge of the plate baking sheet will stop that. Now here is the commissar's instructions. Pretty simple. We're going to take our clippers. See I've got a flat edge on these. Those are important because I'm going to take these clippers and I'm going to put them tight. All right, let's rotate this around. I'm going to put it tight to the model on the flat edge and I'm going to clip into a nice smooth cut. To separate the model from its frame. Alright, so I'm going to take this piece, E4, and I'm going to set it there, and I'm going to keep going around and finding all the little bits. Where's that one? Ah, there's his head. And we're just going to lay them down on top of the instructions. This helps us keep track of everything, especially when you're doing um, alternative options. Uh, there's the power fist. That's cool. So we'll keep going around and cut off all the little bits here. So we have all our pieces cut out, which is actually a really <laughs> short process in here, and I've got my base laid in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto blade and we'll trim all the little nubbins so when we separate it from the frame there's still like um, these little leftover pieces on the model and we'll just smooth those down. Then, ah, there it is, I have my metal file and you notice where all those little nubbins were? That's the gate that connects the model to the frame, the sprue. There's this little mold line, and I like to shave it down. Some people don't, but I notice I like to use watch washes, and if you don't file it down, the wash tends to hold in there. So, uh, the rule of thumb I have is if getting rid of that line reveals details in the model, smooth the model out for the paint job, do it. If it destroys detail, which you'll have in some of the more intricate models, don't do it. So we'll just go around and as we clean off the mold line of each piece, we'll set it back down where it belongs. Now all the pieces are cleaned up, so let's begin the assembly process. And I have my plastic glue. Okay. All right, this happens sometimes. There we go. And you don't go back in there. It always happens with the little ones. All right, so we're going to start with the head first. So I recommend on the head to get a feel for where the angle's supposed to be. Just it actually fits in there pretty well. Just dry fit it. It will find its home eventually, so it will go like that. Okay, so I'll play around it. You actually have a little bit of give in there. Then holding it in with my finger, I'll just squeeze just a dollop of super glue while I'm holding the head in with my pinky finger. I'm going to put a slight 
edge around that peg. I'll put it on the tip there because you gotta imagine a lot of these are can be pain if you fill all the hole. They're machined tightly. This one not so much. Alright, and I like plastic glue because it starts holding it in place right away, but has a little bit of play after it and I hate these pegs so I will chop them off and so let's go here so it looks like this back plate holds the rest of the head in so I'll just put a slight line of glue around the edges here and the tip there Settle in, settle in, little buddy. Ooh, now the head popped out. Tag and have it. Oh, that little piece pushed it out. Oh, it's supposed to fit. Oh, I had it in the wrong angle, so it pushed it out. This is supposed to peg it into place. But now I've glued it. So I'm going to take my little knife and get rid of that little peg in there. Yeah, there's some type of wedge in the back that was meant to tie into the neck solidly. Kind of just hold it into place. So let's just get that out of the way. And there we go. Now, what I want to do next is I'm going to take the flat this and I'm just going to cut flat along the bottom of the sh uh, shoes there. Then we'll take our X-Acto knife, chop that off. And I'll take this, smooth it a little bit. Okay, liking how that looks. Oh, I Hmm. Got a little bit of time to play around with this. Ah, and that gets it at the right angle. So this will Okay, a little extra glue. Count to ten there. Start holding it into place, and I'll pin it with my fingers and hold those uh, piping in. Put this along the bottom of his feet. Now, when you uh, sight these in, you want to look straight down at the base because this has got to go into a storage pack for travel to the local game store. And I want as much of the model positioned with all its flailing limbs. Oh, it stuck to my finger. Okay, now we separate it off. Now he's ready to stalk the underhive. Excellent. Oh, there we go. Well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. And we'll see you next time.